Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Ann in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Ann asks, could you give me some tips for shooting outdoor portraits using natural light? Well, Ann, actually we have a few tips for you. We're gonna go outside and shoot some portraits and we're gonna be using a fill flash. We're gonna use some reflectors, some diffusion panels and just the plain old sun. We're gonna show you how to find the light that you need to get some great portrait shots. So let's get going. Well, we're out here shooting in natural light. Lucky for us, the sun is behind the clouds, which is really rare here in Phoenix. So that is the best situation to be in when you're shooting portraits. And the reason for that is you have really nice soft light. So I'm gonna ask Sam to join us. Sam is our model. Now, if we look at Sam's face here, you can see that there are no shadows on her face. And the reason for that is when the sun hits the clouds, the clouds just diffuse the light. So light is going everywhere and it's bouncing in from all different angles. And so it's really nice soft light with no shadows. Now that is usually when you get the best shot. So let me take a couple of pictures of Sam here, and then we're gonna show you how to really add some punch to this shot. So Sam looked right at me. Beautiful, I love it. Great. Okay, now when I look at that on my LCD, it looks pretty good, but it's sort of flat. It doesn't have a lot of punch to it. And the reason for that is the light is so soft, well, it doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, accents on her face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, Kelsey bring in my flash here. And this is called a fill flash. And what this does is it's just going to add a little pop to Sam here and it's gonna add some highlights to her eyes. Those are called catch lights. And that's gonna give her a little bit more life than what we had with just the really soft light. So use a fill flash to add some life to your shots. So Sam, again, look right at me, beautiful. Perfect. And wow, you can see that adding that fill flash really adds some personality to the shot. And to make sure this works, what I was shooting in was aperture priority mode. I had my aperture wide open at 2.8, and then I just left everything on auto mode, and that's gonna do your uh, shots for you just really, really nicely for us. A lot of people have written in and asked where to position a subject in relationship to the sun. Now, one thing that people do a lot, which is a big mistake, is when they're taking pictures outdoors, they will put the subject with the sun coming right into their eyes. And that's one of the worst things to do because the uh, sun is so bright, it makes everybody's eyes water and they're squinting and it's just not really good. So instead, do just the opposite. And that is to place, place their backs to the sun. And then what you get is this nice uh, highlight around their uh, hair and that gives this angelic look to them. Now what's gonna happen though is their faces obviously are gonna be darker than the highlight around their hair. So use a fill flash. Either use the pop-up flash on your camera or an external flash like this one. And when you do, you'll get a great exposure. So let me show you how this one looks. So Sam, look right at me. Perfect, beautiful, just like that. Excellent. Now when I've done that, I get some great shots. Her eyes are wide open and I don't have that uh, squinty look that's very characteristic of a lot of family photos that are taken around the holidays. Now, a lot of people ask where to place the model with, uh, in natural sunlight. Well, it's more obvious where to place the model when you have really hard light, and we'll show you that when the sun comes out from behind the clouds. But when the light is really soft and diffused, it seems like, well, you can put the model just about anywhere, which is true. What we have right now is we have Sam with her eyes directly into the light, which is really what I don't like to do because and models start to squint and their eyes start watering. But with the clouds as dark as they are right now, we can get away with that. Now you'd be surprised though, you'd think with Sam facing the sun that we'd have a lot of light on her uh, face. So let me take a shot and you can see that when we do this, well, there isn't a lot of light on her face. In fact, her eyes are pretty dark. So what we're gonna do is once again, I'm gonna turn on the flash to add that little fill flash, just a little pop of life. So look right at me, Sam, there we go, bam. And now you can see that when we added the flash, that really brings some life to the shot. So no matter what, if you have your model facing the sun or uh, uh, her eyes uh, into the light, either way, adding just a little fill flash is really gonna help things out. A lot of people have written in and asked what this thing is. Well, this thing is called a lens hood and it's made for shooting in natural light. And what it does is it works sort of like a baseball cap does. And right now we have light that's coming right into my eyes and I'm squinting a lot. Now if I put my eye up to shade my eyes, ah, much nicer and I can actually see what's going on. You've probably done that when you're driving into the sunset. You put down the little flap on your car or you hold up your hand to try to see the road. 
Well, that's what this does. If you have the uh, lens hood off, well, light can come directly into your camera's lens and cause lens flare, which is light bouncing all over inside that lens. Now, when you put the lens hood on, what that's doing is it is basically doing the exact same thing as holding your hand up to your eyes. It's shading the lens and it's making sure that you don't have a lot of light uh, zipping around and reflecting off the actual glass of your lens. That's gonna make your contrast a lot nicer and it's gonna eliminate lens flare. So that's what a lens hood does. All right, well, the sun is now starting to peek out from behind the clouds, which means we have a different kind of light to work with. So before we had really, really soft light on Sam's face. Now you can see if we zoom in here, there are a lot of shadows on her face and that's called hard light. And so we wanna have some kind of way to control that. Now we can do that with that uh, five in one reflector. And so Kelsey's gonna come over. I'm gonna trade her my camera for this reflector. And I'm gonna show you a few things. Now what we've done here is we have the sun behind Sam, and so the sun is hitting the back of her head, so it's giving her some highlights. And what I wanna do is I wanna fill in some light on her face. Now before I showed you how to use a fill flash to do that, well now we have a five in one reflector. So this reflector has a silver surface on it, and what that allows me to do is to catch the sun and I can really light up her face. So you can see that as I'm moving this around, I'm getting a lot of light in there. So uh, what we're doing is uh, allowing us to fill in her face with this reflector instead of a flash. So once again, you can see here that I can really fill in that, uh, her face doing that. Now it's a lot of light. You can see Sam sort of squinting there that bounces off this silver side. There are other sides to doing this as well. So there's silver, which really is punchy. So that really adds a lot of light. There's another side here. And this side here is silver and gold. And so what the silver and gold side does is it allows us to sort of warm up our model. So it will sort of give us a tan. So that's what I'm doing there. And so that gives us a little bit warmer feel. Now on the inside of this five in one reflector, I'll open it up here. And you can see that what happens is I've got one side, two sides, three, four, and the middle is five. That's why it's called a five in one reflector. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna reverse this inside. And when I do that, what I get is uh, two different colors. I get a gold and I get a white. Now the key to this is um, to try to uh, make sure that you get this little loop through the hole here. So I'll get the loop through the hole and that makes sure that everything lines up great. And so once again, I'll stick this on there. Now I've got my silver, I mean my gold and my white, and then I will just zip this around here. Now the difference is uh, before we had gold and silver and silver, with this, we have white, which is gonna allow us to fill in the light on Sam's face just by uh, you know, reflecting that. But it's not quite as harsh as it was before. So it's a little bit softer light than silver. So it's still a nice fill, but it's not quite as baking on the face as it was before. Now the other side here is gold. And what that does is it really, really warms up the subject. In fact, I find that it warms up the subject so much that if you're not careful, what you'll have is this really, really nice copper toned face and a totally white body. And so it doesn't match at all. So be careful when you're using the gold side or else you'll get some, uh, a nice face that's just really, really gold. And then the rest of her body just sort of, you know, white. So you can see how I'm popping that in there. Now, one of the secrets is to using a reflector, sometimes it's hard to figure out like where that light is going. So one of the things that I like to do is start by looking at the ground and figuring out where the light's going and then bringing that up until it hits the face. And you can really see how that is illuminating her face and making her really golden tan, which is sort of unrealistic. But that's how you use a five in one reflector. So we're gonna shoot a few shots using the different uh, reflective surfaces of this so you can see how they look and then we're gonna show you how to use the diffusion panel that's inside. All right, well, we're waiting for the sun to go behind the clouds. It's going in and out, so we don't have much time. And so what we want to do is control the light. And we can do that with something called a five-in-one reflector. That's what this is. It's called a five-in-one reflector because it has five different surfaces. Now, the one that we really care about right now is the inside, and that is this diffusion panel. And what this will do is it allows us to diffuse the light just like the clouds do if the sun goes behind the clouds. So we have Sam over here. So Sam, come on over. 
Now, uh, Sam's our model, and what we want to do is we want to make sure that we eliminate some of these shadows on her face. And to do that, we'll just lift this panel up, and that gives us nice, soft, diffused light. So I have a, an assistant, so Kelsey, come on over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Kelsey hold this reflector, I mean, I'm sorry, this diffusion panel, and once that's up there, I'll get this nice, soft light. So look right at me, Sam. There you go. Perfect. Excellent. And just like that, we went from some really unflattering light to flattering light by using this diffusion panel. Well, now in those shots, we had a great exposure on Sam's face, but the background was overexposed, and that's a problem with dynamic range, which we've covered in a previous episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Now, what we want to do, though, is we want to figure out how to correct that dynamic range by making the background and the subject about the same exposure. Now, to do that, when you have sun that's really bright like this, is to find shade. Now, what shade's going to do is it's going to soften the light, and it's also going to make sure that everything is about the same exposure value, and so you don't have those dynamic range problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to go looking around back here, and we're going to find a place that has nice shade. Well, we scouted around, and we found this really nice shaded area here. We've got shade coming from all of these trees, and so what I did is I'm going to place Sam right in the shade, and so we can see that her face has no light falling on it that's not in shade, and that's important when you're underneath trees like this. So sometimes uh, light can come right through and have a little dappling effect. You don't want that. You want to make sure that your model is totally consistently shaded, and that's what we have. You can see that right on her shoulder here, there's a little bit more light than on her face. And that's totally fine, but if that was on her face, it could cause some really unflattering light. So we've got her positioned, and now we're going to take a few shots. You ready? All right, let's shoot. Well, there you have it, some tips for shooting great portraits with natural light. Now, there are three things I want to remind you of. The first is that you're through the lens metering system. That's the built-in meter on your camera. Sometimes it can get things wrong. And if that happens, make sure you use exposure compensation to overexpose or underexpose, and everything will turn out right. For a detailed explanation on exposure compensation, make sure you watch our Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one episodes all about metering. One of those episodes is all about exposure compensation, how you use it, and how it works. The second thing is make sure that your flash is on high-speed sync or auto FP if you're using a Nikon. That'll allow you to shoot at shutter speeds over 200th of a second, which is required a lot of times when you're shooting outdoors in bright sunlight, especially if you're using a fill flash. Now, the third thing you want to make sure that you do is watch your shutter speed. If you're shooting in, uh, in uh, uh, aperture priority mode, what will happen a lot of times is when the sun is starting to go down, the shutter is going to start slowing down, and what will happen is, well, everything will start to be blurry. So if you see that your shutter speed is below 60th of a second, either increase your ISO or switch over into shutter priority mode, set your camera's shutter speed to 60th of a second, and then fire away. Well, there you go, Anne. I hope those tips help you out with your outdoor portrait photography. We had a lot of fun shooting this episode. Well, remember, if you have a question about photography or photography-related gear, you can always send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me this week. We'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.